Hey, welcome back. In this video, we're going to learn the slice function, and it's another function that is part of Deplier that lets us subset our data. So as you can see that the Deplier package is a super useful package, part of Tidyverse, so we're going to be using uh, a lot of the functions from it. In this video, we're going to focus on the slice function as well as some variations such as slice sample, slice min, and slice max. And what they let us do is basically specify indices of the data or uh, basically ways to order the data. And you're welcome to go through the documentation. What I'm going to do is switch to R and start using it in certain examples. So first case, let's say that we want to grab the first 10 rows of the data. All we have to do is just pipe the data into the slice function and then specify the indices. So the way I would do that is basically by specifying the first index, which is one, so the first row, and then colon, and then the 10th row. So what it's going to do is grab this entire range. And once I run this, you can see that we have 10 rows of our data. Let's say that you want to grab the last 100 rows of the data. We can also do that with a slice function. So I know that there are about 48,895 rows in the data. So what I could do is basically do something like slice and then specify that I want to start from 48,795. And then to specify the entire length, I need to use here another function, which is this n function. And just if I, if I run this, you'll see that we have the last 101 rows. It is inclusive to the last number, so th therefore we have 101 rows instead of just 100. Now, as far as this n function goes, we haven't seen examples of this yet, but what it is doing is finding the total number of rows, which is 48,895, as we've seen in previous examples. So I'm saying that I want to select from 48,795 to 48,895. And we could be a little bit more efficient when using this. So let's say that you have some type of application or some analysis in which you always want to look at the last portion of, of your data. What you could do is, I'm just going to copy this to show an example of that. So let's say that your data keeps on increasing or it keeps moving uh, to different periods of the year. What we could do is to always look at the last portion. What we need to specify here is n minus 100. So what this is doing is it's doing an operation. And it's finding that there are 48,895 rows in this current data set. So subtracting 100 from that and then all the way to the 48,895 rows. And I actually have to put this within parentheses so that it performs the function. Uh, it performs this calculation. And once I run this, you'll see that it gets us the last 101 rows of the data as before. Of course, you could use the slice function with some other examples like the filter function or the select function. So let's say that we grab the first 50 rows of our data. I'm going to say 1 to 50. And then we also want to basically select a certain column or columns. Let's say that we want to grab the neighborhood group and the neighborhood. What I got to do is use the select function as well. And as we saw in the previous example, we can use the select helpers, such as contains. So once I use here contains, and I just got to specify here neighborhood, or e even with this, it would work. But let's just be a little bit more explicit. So now we can see that we have the first 100 rows and only the columns that we wanted to select. So that's where slice is super useful when using in conjunction with other functions. Let's say that you want to find houses uh, which have the, the highest prices. We could use the slice max function for that. So uh, what I'm going to do is pipe the data into the slice max. And here I can specify that we want to order it by the price. And there are a couple of ways to select uh, a specific number of rows. We'll take a look at an easy one. Basically, I want to get the top 10 price listings. So once I do that and go a little bit here, we can see that uh, these are the top 10 uh, highest price listings. Of course, I could use the slice min. Now remember that some of the prices are zero. So we want to see the ones which are greater than zero. And we can use the filter function here. So use the filter function and look for uh, listings which are greater than zero. And then 
Now we want to actually look at the minimum priced listings. So we can pipe it into a slice min function and order it by the price and then n equals 10. So the 10 lowest priced listings. And here we can see that all of these have the price of 10. Last one that I'll show is the slice sample. And what slice sample lets us do is to generate a random sample of our data. And this is pretty useful sometimes for testing purposes. So what I'm going to do is pipe it into the slice sample. And all we got to do is specify either a proportion of our data or the number of rows of our data. So if I just specify the number of rows, we could say we want a random sample of 100 rows. And it's going to grab that for us. Or alternatively, we could specify the proportion. So in the proportion, I could do something like I want to generate the 5% of the data. So I could do that by just specifying here 5% as a fraction. And then once I do that, we get uh, about 2,444 rows. So I hope you found this useful. We're going to be using Slice often in future videos as well, so you'll get more practice there. I appreciate you joining me, and I'll see you next time.